Kia ora koutou, no Wanganui aho ko Louisa Horman Taku Ingua. I originally grew up in Wanganui, um, studied in Wellington for six years, and have worked here in Ōtautahi for the last six for the last six years <laughs> in the research team at the Air Force Museum of New Zealand. Um, just some some pictures there of my time at the museum um, when. I finished uni and I was applying for jobs all over the country um, and was offered my current role here in Christchurch. Um, my partner and I made the move down south um, and that's us just at the top there sitting in a herc, um, which has been one of the um, more unique experiences as um, part of this role. Um, so um, the Air Force Museum of New Zealand is quite big by New Zealand standards for a museum, but um, our collections team is actually quite small and the research team is even smaller. There's three of us. And so as a museum professional working in that environment, um, you've really got to be ready to assist with a wide variety of tasks as needed. And that's actually one of the things I really love about my job is that it has a lot of variety to it and I'm always learning something new. My role as archives technician involves a bunch of different things, um, collections work, writing work, presenting to groups, uh, providing a research service that's both remote and in person. And um, yeah, that's kind of, those are kind of the main areas of the working, um, of the work that we do in this team. Cataloging archival collections on Vernon, which is our collection management software, um, Collections care and research as part of that process. So that's um, housing artifacts, um, personal collections, things that we are donated to the, um, to the collection um, and making sure they're stored um, and preserved for the future. Um, contributing to acquisitions and disposals decisions, collection audits and being responsible for the environmental monitoring of um, the areas that we use to store our archives. Um, research and writing for the museum blog, social media, um, for exhibitions sometimes, um, supporting the delivery of public programs, including our annual war, art and propaganda program to Christchurch girls. Maybe some of you have been part of that program. Um, giving public talks and get, guest speaker events conferences. Um, and engaging with the public and military aviation research community by responding to research inquiries, supervising and assisting volunteers and researchers using the archive. Um, underpinning all of that is really um, historical research skills and those are what I learned when I went to university. Um, and it feeds into almost everything I do at the museum. The skills needed, um, attention to detail, good written skills, um, team-based skills like collaboration and communication, confidence using digital media, uh, public speaking, not always necessary, but it is very helpful, um, and creativity and problem-solving skills, project management, these sorts of things, they're quite varied, um, but they enable you to help out in a lot of areas. So the theme this year is looking at um, kind of working in the digital space. So I thought I'd talk about um, a digital project I've worked on. So in 2018, I led the team behind Wahine Toa Women in Defence, which is an online exhibition created um, to mark the 125th anniversary of suffrage in Aotearoa. This was a collaborative project by the, the three New Zealand service museums, exploring the journeys of women serving in the New Zealand Defence Force since gender integration in 1977. So um, it was a quite a, a look at quite a recent history um, for the Defence Force. Um, so we worked with the National Army Museum at Waiuru and Torpedo Bay Navy Museum in Auckland. And when my original exhibition proposal um, on Air Force it was focused on Air Force women in combat. Um, and it was accepted as an online exhibition at the time because there wasn't capacity to do a, a full-blown, um, proper physical exhibition. But our director 
at the time, Therese Angelo, is that name again, um, suggested broadening the scope to also include Navy and Army personnel. After all, the legislation uh, introduced by the New Zealand government in 1977 regarding gender, gender integration in the armed forces was not just about one service. Um, it was about um, the defence force actually changing the way they do things and eventually um, abolishing gender discrimination across all three services. So it is, um, it's a tri-service history. So we decided then to collaborate and it became tri-service with team members joining from all three museums to help develop the exhibition. And this was a really interesting exhibition, um, the digital project to lead. It was my first time curating an exhibition. Um, I was in my second year at the museum um, and a wonderful challenge to be given early in my career. Um, what made it so was the chance to work digitally, which in the end meant it we created something that was more accessible um, and it's it also more adaptable um, it has a, a longer that has a longevity um, to it unlike a, a, a gallery display um, but it also working digitally is what enabled us to actually work with the other museums like if we didn't have that ability um, yeah, it would have been uh, not as uh, not as an interesting story, really, that we were able to tell. And finding digital solutions to our problems, we ended up pooling our skills and resources to work very closely to produce the exhibition. So the team interviewed women currently serving and retired, and these interviews were captured on video and audio, uploaded to Vimeo, and embedded onto our exhibition webpage. Um, and Michelle's team um, was actually um, very um, much involved in this, given that they um, run our, or ran our website, where this lives. Um, so that's some of the Navy exhibition uh, interviews, Army interviews, um, Air Force interviews. So the interviews are the main focus of the exhibition, but we also added some slideshow and timeline components to help contextualise um, what our interviewees were talking about. Um, and it was a chance to show um, parts of the collection. So the um, recruiting, what you can see there, um, you can... Um, click through the images and see examples of recruiting um, materials from the three services um, from World War II through to um, modern day. Um, and then the timeline, which you can scroll through, um, gives, it's got like government policies, um, so at a kind of national level, but then also defence force policy changes and and also um, changes that happened in regards to the different trades um, in the three services. Because even though the services, the gender integration happened in 1977, there were still a lot of trades that were um, banned for women or not accessible um, based on gender. So those changes are reflected in the timeline. Um, so how I got my job and um, some tips. Um, so I did a Master of Arts in History and Postgraduate Diploma in Museum and Heritage Studies after completing a BA with honours, all at Tehiring and Walker Victoria University of Wellington. Um, work experience gained during university, I like tried to do just as much as I could while studying. Um, I did Heritage and Museum internships, paid and unpaid. Um, these were in digital content curation at the uni and in collections research at Te Papa. Tutoring, advocacy work through the student union, conference organising and reception work. Um, I volunteered at the Holocaust Centre of New Zealand um, and for a short time at the Whanganui Regional Museum while well between contracts. So 
yeah, my, my, one of my tips would be to try and gain as much work and or volunteer experience as you can while you study, especially in the early years when you may have more study link support than later on during postgrad, um, where your precious time is either spent studying and or needing to earn money. And unfortunately in this sector, it's sometimes hard to find opportunities that will pay you for your mahi. Um, the reality is, yeah, a lot of museums and galleries um, rely on volunteers. So I'll also say apply for scholarships, put yourself out there. They can free you up time-wise a bit more um, vol for volunteering at a museum, perhaps. Um, summer research scholarships, a lot of universities offer these. Um, they're really great. Um, try and get your work published if you can, if you're after curatorial work. Be prepared to move around the country for opportunities because you maximise your opportunities a lot more than limiting yourself to one area. Um, give yourself time. Start applying while you're studying if you're looking to move straight from study into work. And get involved in the sector or before if you can. So do things like conference organising, join a professional body. There are usually student discounts for a lot of um, the professional bodies um, in this sector. Um, so you can join as a student at a reduced rate. Um, these are great for networking and for if you've moved, like I did for my role, it helped me make helped make me feel more settled in this place um, because I got to meet other people working in the sector um, here in Christchurch. Um, I was one of the youngest on staff at the museum for a very long time. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that really helped me. Yeah, I think that's probably all time-wise. <laughs>